Traditionally, we use tools, the hammer, the tongs to hold the shoe. We have an anvil. You may decide to use a forge, or you may decide to shape the shoe cold. Today, we're going to shape it cold. Now, I've taken the shoe to the hoof. This is a diamond special shoe. It has a wider width of web for this flatter foot and I need to round up the front of the shoe. So any shaping we do, we start at the toe, move to the toe quarters, the quarters, and then finally the heels. So get your toe between first nail and first nail hole adjusted before moving back. Check that and then go on to shape the rest of your shoe. So I define that I need to broaden the toe. I can put that on the horn of the anvil I'm going to have air space between the anvil and the shoe. Holding the shoe with the tongs, I'll hit directly down on there with the flat side of the hammer. You have a round side and a flat side. Using the flat side, I'll drop that hammer. And I'm just slowly rocking that shoe back and forth so that I get a broader toe. I'm going to look closely at the toe, define if it's similar to the hoof. I have a little sharper bend right here that I'm going to adjust for. I'll make sure that there's airspace between the shoe and the anvil. Hitting straight down, walking back and forth, I've now broadened that toe up. I'll check it with the hoof and then we'll move on to the toe quarters. And so using my fingers, I'm just feeling around there, feel if it's the right shape, and right up into here, then I start getting a little too wide. So I go by the nails at about two and a quarter. I need to start bringing that shoe in. I'm going to adjust my tongs so that when I hit down on that shoe, the shock goes into the tongs. I'm keeping my elbow in close to me, going at two and a half right here, so I have that radius on that anvil underneath there. And then airspace at uh, two and a quarter where I defined that I needed to start going in. And then I'll hit down on there and just rock my hammer, go over, over the edge of the anvil. I'll grab the other side. I'm going to have no airspace under the horn, or above the horn. Go at about two and a quarter, where I defined I had to bring that shoe in, and hit beyond while dropping the tongs. Make those adjustments. Check it to the horse's foot, put it in the right position. Run my fingers around to see where I have to make further adjustments. And after the third nail hole, now I still have to bring that shoe in. Taking it back to the anvil. Having no air space between the third nail hole and the anvil, I'll hit right beyond that while dropping my tongs. Go to the other side. Third nail hole on the horn. Just beyond, I'll hit down. Check the adjustment of the shoe. Put it in the same position. Run my fingers around and define where I need to come in. And on this side, over here, I need to come in some more. I'll define where I'm going to start, again just after the third nail hole, and bring that in some more. And before I go back to the hoof again, I'll look down the shoe this way and this way and define how the shoe is going. And if I have curvature here, I want to hit where the curvature begins to bring that heel back up. So setting it on the face of the anvil. I'm 
I will hit at the point where I want that bend to start. And follow through again. Check how level it is to find where the bend needs to be. I want this shoe to come up in this heel. I want it to start coming up at the toe. I'll make a few hits. I'll look at it again to find what I want to do. Look at it this way. Look at it this way. And I've gone just a little too much on this side. I'll set that back down. I'll check the shoe again. As for the shape of it. I'm using my fingers and we can also pull the horse's foot forward. And we'd look at that shoe from above. Put it in the position that you anticipate nailing it. And beyond the bend in the quarter, this is the quarter, we want just a small amount of room for expansion as that hoof bears weight, it moves in and out, and we need about enough to roll a dime from the bend in the quarter's back. The heel should extend, the heel of the shoe should extend to the heel of the hoof. We're going to make sure that we're uniform on both sides. And on the other branch, I could tighten it up a little more in this area. So on this branch, I need to straighten it up in this portion right here. I can go to this end of the anvil, the area that I need to straighten up right there. Straighten that up. And then I need it to curve that heel in more. I'll have the same radius under the shoe so there's complete contact. Just beyond that contact, I'll hit over the edge. Again, flatten the shoe. Every shoe has to be adjusted for every hoof. The fronts are very different from the hind feet. The right feet can be very different from the left feet. So every shoe has to be adjusted to the hoof. Once the shoe is adjusted, we're ready to put that sh shoe on. We need to choose the appropriate nails for that shoe. I have choices for my nails. This is a five city slim. City defines the shape of the head. Slim defines the shape of the shank. It's a very smooth, very sharp nail for lighter shoes or smaller horses or thinner walled horses. I may choose to use a slim blade nail for a sturdier hoof wall, a heavier shoe, heavier horse. I may define a city head. When I place the nail in the shoe, there's a stamp or a trademark on the inside of the head of that nail. That trademark goes towards the inside or the middle of the foot. It's placed that way because the other end of the nail is tapered and that taper defines the bend as the nail exits the hoof wall. When I'm placing a shoe on a hoof, the shoe has been adjusted appropriately for that hoof. I'll hold the shoe with one hand, get the nail with the other, 
trademark goes towards the center of the foot. I'm going to put a finger up on the side of the hoof wall where I want that nail to exit. I'll start the nail, remove my finger, hold the shoe, and drive the nail in. Where it exits the hoof wall, right there, I need to wring the nail off or bend it over. I'll choose to wring it off. I'm going to bend that nail out at a 90 degree angle, push my claws of the hammer all the way up onto the nail shaft, and just spin the head of that, and that busts off the end of the nail. Then I'll move to the other side of the shoe, doing the same thing, trademark in, place a finger up on the hoof wall where I want that nail to exit, aim the nail for that finger, remove that finger, and complete driving that nail in. And then bend or ring off the nail. I've driven a couple of nails and for demonstration purposes I'll clinch those up at this time and using a clinch block I'll place that on my hand like this. This corner goes underneath where the nail exits the hoof wall and hammering down on the horseshoe nail that brings the horseshoe nail out of the hoof wall at a 90 degree angle. I'll move to the opposite side and tap that down, bringing that nail out at a 90 degree angle. Then I'll take that foot forward, and where that nail exits the hoof wall, I'm going to use the clincher and I use it upside down, just bend that nail more at a 90 degree angle. Bend the nail out more at a 90 degree angle. Then using the clinching rasp, smooth side, I'm going to rasp underneath the horseshoe nail, just taking the burr off. And then I'll make the nail where it comes out of the hoof, very square and about as long as it is wide. Burr out again. Then I'm going to use the clincher in the right side up and I'm going to get at the end of the reins, pry down and then in. Pry down and then in. Then I'll use the smooth side of the file. I'll use it at an angle and take any sharp edges off. This process is for the safety of the horse. Now we have a nail that's clinched, bent over to hold that shoe on. A shoe design has eight nail holes punched in it you're going to use those nail holes which you feel are safe. Just because a manufactured shoe has eight nail holes doesn't mean you have to use all of them. We may just use the first three. When removing the horse's shoe, we'll need pull-offs. First we would cut the clinch. That's the last step in the process of shoeing a horse. Where the nail exits the hoof wall, it's folded over, we need to cut it or straighten it out. And once we've cut those clinches, then we can use a pull-off tool and pry between the heel of the shoe and the heel of the hoof. Just pull back a little bit. Pry between the heel of the shoe and the heel of the hoof. On the other side, pull back a little bit. Tap down on that shoe and then pull the nails individually. We're always going to work from the heel towards the toe. Pry down towards the toe, loosen those nails as you go down.